Blessings, everyone. I hope you guys are having a good night. I just wanted to come on to address something, um, and it has to do with the Catholic Church. And I first want to say that the Catholic uh, people that are going to worship Jesus and God, they're good people. They're good people. They want to do what's right. They want. They love God. I know that's for true. I know that's for true because boy, they're they they go to mass. They they come up and down on their knees, up and down, up and down. They say all the prayers. They do the best they can by being good. They you know you, you know you can tell they love God and they want to do the best that they can. But the problem with that is is they are being duped by the Catholic Church with a false doctrine. And I'm going to tell you how. The Catholic Pope, the whole Catholic Church, the nuns, the priests, you know, the ones that are, you know, more head up than others, the diocese, you know, they teach that you don't only pray to Jesus. Matter of fact, they're getting to where they teach you're not supposed to pray to Jesus at all. You're supposed to pray to Mother Mary to get to Jesus, to get to God. Jesus is our only intercessor. That's it. He is the only one between man and God. There is no one else. There is no one else that got their entrails ripped out of them with a weapon that was called a flagrum. And it had three leather um, straps on it. And it had uh, a balls on the end of it where they had shavings of metal, glass. And some say in his, you know, in history, uh, in historical evidences, that they had hooks on them. They ripped his entrails out of him. They ripped his beard out of his face. Nobody else did that for me. Jesus did. Not Mother, not not Mary, not Peter, not Stephen, not Paul, not the Pope. Nobody. Nobody else did that for me. Nobody else died for me. Nobody else had that much love for me that they died for me. And they hung on that cross. And you know where they put the nails, the six inch nails in, in their um, wrists? You know it's called the humor, I guess it's called the humor bone. The humorous bone? Well, it's not humorous. That's what it hit. You know how painful that is? And that was after he was beat. With a horrible weapon. Nobody else did that. Nobody else did that for me. I'm just going to pl uh, play a little bit of something that, like I said, it's kind of made me a little bit ill. Uh, and, you know, I, I'm human. I have a righteous anger for my Lord. You know, Jesus, when he went through the courtyard on the outer um, uh court of the temple where the money changers were you know they were making their money you know we were all we are all tempted in three different ways just like Jesus was the lust of the eye the lust of the flesh and the lust of the things of this world the Catholic Church is the the most wealthiest church in the world and always has been because of their practices and there's a lot of them that's pretty messed up But I'm going to go on because I want to just play this little bit of something for you guys that, like I said, has made me ill. But anyways, Jesus, when he went to the courtyard, he didn't take his fingers and lift up the table and go, oh, y'all stop that. Y'all better quit it. No, he had righteous anger for his father. He told him, he said, he beat them with cords. And he said, Quit making my father's house a den of thieves. 
He was angry. He was mad. And let me tell you what. I love my Lord God. And I'm going to stand up for him no matter what. No matter how I make other people upset. You know, like I said, you Catholics, like, you're all great. You're good people. But you guys are being told the wrong gospel. It's the gospel of grace. We are saved by grace. Through faith. It is not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. So that no man should boast. Calling him father, the Pope, really? I have one father. He's in heaven. It says, Jesus said, do not call any man here on earth father. And that was in a spiritual sense, you guys, a spiritual sense. You know, antichristos, antichrist, means in place of or against. The Pope has made himself in place of on this earth of God. It's idol worship. They worship this man that's full of sin. They kiss his ring and they call him father. Seriously. It's very, it, it makes me very ill. And also, I just want to play this little insert for you of what they're doing with Mary. They have for a very long time, but I think they're really getting really, really bad with it. This video, they were carrying around a statue. It was of one of the saints. I don't know who. St. Paul, St. Mary. I don't know. I don't know who they were carrying. But it fell over and it broke. And they all freaked out. But I'm I'm skipping over that because it's too loud. But um, too much commotion. Y'all aren't going to understand it anyways. But I just told you what happened. So I, when you get to this part right here where this woman is speaking. Not this one, but there's another one uh, that's coming up. It just gave me chills. It made me feel, ugh, you know, just, ugh. It was horrible. So I want you to listen to this, guys, and then I'll be back. Or statue of Mary and pray. Hmm. Even the Pope prays before Mary with him. Even the Pope. Oh, like he's something, something. He's a man. He's a sinful man just like the rest of us. Even the Pope. <laughs> really? Praise before Mary. Did she die for you? Did she have her entrails ripped out of her for you? No, she didn't. Did she fulfill the law for you? As a man in sinful flesh. You know. He fulfilled every letter of the law for us. He did two things. He fulfilled every letter of the law for us. God. Emmanuel. With us. God. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And everything that was made was made by him and through him. And then the word became flesh. You know, in Genesis where it says, and God said, and God said, and God said. That's Jesus. That's the Word. That's His Son. That's Him. Elohim. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. They're one. He came out of God. He is God. Only God can forgive sins. Period. He told the man um, by the, um, beset the pool. He told him to pick up his bed and walk. Pick it up and walk. In other words, your sins are forgiven you. Only God can forgive sins. Only God. Not Mary. Not Peter. Not Pope. Not Paul. Not St. Stephen. Not None of them. I'm not saying they weren't awesome men. And I'm not, and I'm not including the Pope in that, y'all. I'm just going to make that clear. <laughs> I'm talking about Peter, Paul, and Stephen, and... You know, and, and all the rest of them <laughs> that spread the good news, the gospel, the real good news. We were saved by grace through faith. <laughs> That's it. Including Martin Luther. <laughs> Especially Martin Luther. He was one man that went up against the Catholic Church. Because he could read. He was learned. Because most people back then, they were either peasants or they were wealthy. Through the royalty and through the Catholic Church. 
which is the wealthiest church on earth. Well, I wonder why. You know, they make you pay for the repentance. They make you pay for um, indulgences. They make you pay uh, because of purgatory. I mean money. I'm talking about money. <laughs> you know, it, it, that's not the way it works. Jesus paid the price for us, paid it in full for us with his atoning blood as a man in sinful flesh. He fulfilled every letter of the law for us. He didn't come to abolish it. He came to fulfill it. And that's exactly what he did. He died on the cross. He went down to Sheol, which is not purgatory. Hades, hell, he went down to Sheol. That's a whole other teaching, and I'm not going to go into it right now. Okay. I already have videos on it. And, you know, go check them out, guys. But... He went down there. Death could not hold him. You know, the wages of sin is death. Death could not hold him. The reason why death could not hold him is because as a man in our sinful flesh, he fulfilled every letter of the law. He was without sin. Fully God. Fully man. At the same time. I'll go on with the video. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm ramping in a raven. <laughs> Here we go. His head lowered. Why do people praise and worship Mary, whom Jesus was born of? Good question. Now Catholics are taught that it is better to pray to Mary, who is merciful and understands us. It's better to pray to Mary, that is merciful. And understands us. How about a loving God that came down off his throne that is merciful and understands us and took our punishment, lived as a man, fulfilled the law for us as a man because Adam messed up. Well, the last Adam didn't, Jesus. Wow, what an awesome God we have, right, guys? What a beautiful, awesome God. You don't see anybody in Revelation praising, getting down on their knees and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Mary. No, 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 no. All praise, all glory goes only to Him. Only to Him. He's our intercessor between man and God. No one comes to the Father except through the Lord Jesus. The Christ. The Anointed One. That's it. Nobody. Everybody else, they're men. They live. They died. Jesus lived. He died. But he's the only one that rose again, and he's still living, and he's on the right-hand side of the Father. <laughs> oh, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, Jesus. Thank you so much for doing what you did for me. Nobody else did it. Nobody else is going to get my, my praise either. Nobody. Nobody but you. Not any man, not even myself. <laughs> I'm full of sin. I will be until my body is made incorruptible. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Until then, you know, we just do the best we can. You know, Jesus says that you'll know my sheep by the fruit that they bear. Are you bearing fruit? Have you confessed him as your Lord and Savior? You believed in your heart and confessed him with your mouth and believed in your heart that he is Lord. Then he says, then you are saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son for whosoever shall believe within him should not perish but have everlasting life. For whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You believe in him? You confess him with your mouth through the spirit of faith. Then you receive the spirit of promise. God is not a man that he should lie. Ephesians 4.30 You are sealed to the day of redemption. Sealed. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit could be given and taken away. In the New Testament, ah, he sent the paraclete when he went up there. He is the mercy seat. His sacrificial blood, perfect human blood, took a human. No other human could have done it because no other human was righteous enough to do it, to rise from the dead. 
We're all with sin, every, sin, every one of us except for him. Without sin, he was able to rise from the dead. And through our confession, through faith, being born of the, of the Spirit, and of the water, not of the flesh. He says a man must be born again of the Spirit and of the water, and of water. Well, we know who the Holy Spirit is, but who's the water? Well, let's go to the um, woman, at the, the Samaritan woman at the well. He told her, he says, you'll thirst again if you drink this water. He says, but if you drink of me, I am the living water that will flow out of your body, out of the belly, out of your belly. He is the living water. That's how a man is born again. By receiving him. His truth. He says, I am the way. I am. The way. The truth. And the life. No man comes unto the Father except through him. We're not to pray to Mother Mary. I don't even know if I want to call her that. We're not to pray to Mary. We're not to pray. We're not to pray to any saint ever. We're not to be getting these little beads and you know you go into a booth and the man sits there. The man is just as simple as you are. You know if you've transgressed one, transgressed one part of the law, you transgress the whole law. And I'm talking about the 613 of the Torah and the Ten Commandments. You are henceforth unclean. Every one of us have done it because it's in our DNA. <laughs> and if not, then we will all be living now on the earth. Boy, it would be a populated place. Way worse than it is now. I don't think the earth could hold all the people that's lived and died. I hope you guys are getting this because it's the truth. It is the real gospel of grace. He is the gospel of grace. He is our intercessor. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. Yeshua HaMashiach. He is my salvation. He proclaimed, proclaimed on the cross. I'm not even going to go to the part of Mary and everything with this woman speaking. She just, it, it makes me ill. It gave me horrible goose pimples like, ugh. But he cried on the cross, It is finished. Give all praise and all glory to him and only him, nobody else, because nobody else deserves it. He is the perfect Lamb of God. He is God. He did it all. He did it for you. Confess him. Believe in him. Do it. Do it today. You ain't got much time. We're getting ready to get out of here. The church is getting ready to leave. And the Holy Spirit goes, He that letteth will let until he is taken out of the way. When he, the Holy Spirit, is taken out of the way, <laughs> the fullness of the Jew and the Gentile, woo, we're going with him. The Holy Spirit goes, we're going. And then there's going to be hor horrible tribulation on this earth like nobody's ever seen. You don't want to be here. Accept him as your Lord and your Savior today. Just say a prayer. Just by faith. Receive his grace. His love. His mercy that he did for us. On the cross. Say thank you Lord Jesus for coming and, and, and dying for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for living as a man in my sinful flesh. So that you could have compassion for me. And understand what I go through as a human being. You know, we are all tempted in three ways, just like he was. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the things of this world. Are we going to be perfect after we accept him? No. But he indwells us, the Holy Spirit. He sent the paraclete for us. The paraclete indwells us, the Holy Spirit. And he shows us our sin as a mirror and he helps us 
through our whole lives to be better people, to love one another. You know, the first four commandments were about loving God, and the last six were about loving man, and the 613 Torah was all the same, loving God and loving man. This teaches us to be relational human beings walking in love. Well, you know, just like the woman with the alabaster uh, perfume oil, she went and she rubbed it all over Jesus' feet. And the, and the men that were standing around were, why are you letting her do that? He says, have you glorified me like this to them? He says, have you washed my feet like she has? She was like, mercy, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, son of David. She knew who her Savior was. And that's her confession of faith. And that was her love. Because you know the one that is forgiven much. Loves much. That's what forgiveness produces. Love. Condemnation produces fear, guilt, shame. Everything that's ugly in the fat flesh. Now therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So please just say this prayer. Tell him, say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Jesus for what you did for me. Thank you for coming off your throne Lord God. Thank you for putting on my sinful flesh. Thank you for having those six inch nails drove into your wrists. Thank you for being taken a whipping for me, for my sin, from a righteous God that had to had to fulfill all righteousness. A righteous God has to punish sin. If he did not, he wouldn't be righteous. Just let him go. Oh, everybody just kill each other. No. Just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for doing that for me. For coming down on your throne. For putting on my several flesh. For taking such horrible beating. For dying for me on the cross. For filling the law for me. I am a sinner and I know I am and I need you. You're my Savior. Thank you for doing that. And say this with your heart. Any words you want to put in it, but say it with your heart and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Please come into my heart. Say it now because there's no time left, you guys. Hardly. I'm telling you, there's not. And just say, In Jesus' name I pray. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Receive him in the spirit of faith. Then the Holy Spirit, he comes in, he indwells you that very second. And you have now been adopted through faith, through his grace, as a son or a daughter of the Most High God. And you will be in heaven through his righteousness that has been imputed to you. Praise in all glory. Praise in all glory. Bless bless our Savior. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Do it. Do it now. Do it by yourself in your house. Say it. You get a measure of faith. Bam. Say it. Say it. Say it. He'll come in and he'll dwell you. You're saved, man. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to be with God. You're going to be with your ancestors, your loved ones. You're going to be with your pets. You know, God is love, you know. He loves the animals, too. So, anyways, I hope this has been a blessing to you. Don't pray to anybody else. Nobody else is your intercessor. Only the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it, you guys. Stay with the true gospel. He comes in and he produces love out of you. That's what he wants us to do is love one another. Love him first, the greatest commandment, and love one another. Those were his two commandments. And the third commandment was... Preach the good news. This is the good news. I've done it all for you. Jesus says he's done it all for you. 
I love you that much, he says. I love you that much that I did this for you. Accept it and then go and love one another the best you can until I come and redeem you and take you home. <laughs> That's my message. Amen and amen.